guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of Making a Pepper Mill. Well, last week on the show, we finished up by pretty much having the pepper mill turned and we were going to apply that CA finish to the exterior of the pepper mill. So let's head over to the lathe and see how that worked out. Well, here we have our pepper mill with the CA finish applied and it's now time to part these pieces off. You want to part it so that the tenon remains on this lower part of your pepper mill and the top part has no tenon on it. So I'm going to get my thinner parting tool and uh, part these off and then we're going to start working on this top section. Well I just want to show you a little bit of an error here and it's not that big of a deal but our tenon here, when we parted it, our one inch hole should have come straight through here and we didn't drill it quite deep enough. So that's really not that big of a deal. We're going to uh, get our cordless drill, put our Forstner bit on it and uh, support our pepper mill and we're going to carry on this hole through the top because we need this one inch hole to be right through. So I'm going to repair that and then we're going to start working on the actual top of this. And there it is. We've extended that hole through. Not a problem. So you've got your main hole here which is where your pepper comes out as well as your hole for your mechanism and it should go right through the top. Now you'll notice this is a little bit off center. Um, that is because the extension actually wanders a little bit and we're not too concerned about that because that will all be hidden inside and um, it's pretty tough in the ones that I've turned I've never with one of those extensions ever been able to get this dead center and it's never affected the pepper mill at all so we're going to carry on now and we're going to move over back to the lathe and start working on the, um, the, the knob for the top of this pepper mill. Well back here at the lathe the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to spin our tool rest to face the front of this knob and we're going to clean this up. We're going to take away this center little thing and this little nib that's uh, come off of here and we're going to completely clean this up and give it a light sanding just to make this nice and flush. Our next step is that we're going to measure our tenon here and then once we get it measured we're going to set up a Forstner bit into the tailstock and we're going to drill a hole that size into here. Now this one is one and three quarter. I got off pretty lucky and it's going to be a good fit so I can use my one and three quarter Forstner. But if for some reason yours is an off size, that's not a problem. Just pick the drill bit that's one size below the size of your tenon and then use your parting tool or your skew or whatever you can to get in there and just enlarge it ever so slightly so that this is going to fit into here now and sit flush against this top section. So I'm going to drill this hole and then do test fits until we get a nice flush fit and then we're going to move on to our next step. Now for this you just want to take it slow. You don't want to drill it too deep and then have problems that way. So we're just going to ever so gently bring that Forstner bit in there and we're just going to drill a uh, shallow one and three quarter inch hole. And just like that we have a nice flush fit. 
So now that we're happy with that, we can move on. The next thing that we need to do is drill the recess for this part here. And this part is the drive plate for your top knob. It's in your kit. And uh, what you're going to need for this is a 7 8 of an inch Forstner bit. That's actually too small, but we're going to use our parting tool to uh, enlarge it once we get this drilled. So you just, just like we did here with this uh, recess for the tenon, we're going to change our bit here to a 7 8 of an inch and just drill in ever so slightly till we get the proper depth and then we're going to enlarge the hole just ever so slightly so that this little disc here, your drive plate, fits nice and flush in this section right here. And my particular plate is one eighth of an inch thick. So I'm just going to check with calipers to see uh, exactly how deep I've got this hole and how much further I have to go. I'm only three thirty seconds of an inch deep there. So I have to go just a little bit more to get that one eighth of an inch recess. And there you go. You can see how nice and flush and uh, how well that little drive plate fits into that uh, top head of our um, pepper mill. So it's as easy as that to get the drive plate in and uh, now you can pull that out of there and we have one more hole to drill. Well the very last hole that you want to drill here is going to be the through hole that is uh, going to house the mechanism or the the rod that goes up through the pepper mill. And for that we're going to use a quarter inch brad point bit. And uh, just take it slow and uh, take it in about a half an inch, back it off, let the, uh, the bit clear the chips, and then in another half an inch, and carry on until you get your hole drilled all the way through the head of your pepper mill. Um, the reason you want to clear the chips and just take it nice and slow is you don't want this bit to wander and have your, uh, your hole come out the top way off center. Now that we have all of the holes drilled, um, I'm going to part this off the lathe at this point in time. Well, we've got this knob separated and it looks like crap. And that's because it's all flat at the top. It's, it's not finished. It, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but we're going to finish it. And what you need to do is you need to make a jam chuck. And I just turned this now out of a scrap piece of wood in probably about two minutes, if that. And all it is, is it's mounted in our four jaw chuck and you turn a little tenon on the end, a tapered tenon that's going to go inside this one eighth recess. And this is going to jam on there, just like that. And let's see if I can get it, there we go, just like that and the friction is going to hold it there and we're going to bring the tailstock up to meet with our quarter inch hole and once we get that done we're going to finish turning the top of this. Now we're going to mar some of our finish here and I'm not concerned because we have to redo the finish on this top anyway but we're going to bring our tailstock up, our, our live center, right up to here. We're going to jam it on our jam chuck here and once we get that all in place we're going to finish turning that. And with that, that is the turning portion of this project completed. Um, but now we have to move forward to the assembly of it. And it's not rocket science. In fact, it's rather simple. And I'm going to show you step by step. So let's head over to the bench. Well, I'm going to start off the assembly by just going through some of the parts of this uh, pepper mill kit and how they go together. 
So this here is your main shaft and you've got this little threaded section here. This goes at the top of your pepper mill. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your grinder, which is this funny looking gear thing, and that gets installed onto this shaft just like so. So it goes right down to the bottom. This bottom end is peened so that it can't slide off. Once that gets put into place, your ring uh, goes down over top of your grinder just like that. And they sit quite well together. You can see how they nest in there. The next step is that you want to find the spring that comes with your kit. Now this here is a uh, tapered spring and you want the small diameter end to be pointing down towards your grinding mechanism. Once that is in place, then this weird looking bracket, you know, which is basically just your spring bar, this goes over top of the whole assembly just like this and it will line up with the grooves that is in the ring of your grinder there. Once that assembly is together, this whole thing basically slides inside of your pepper mill, just like that. Now, once you get this put into place, you want to align everything up. There's one more retaining bar that goes on top of this and that will line up just like that and you will pre-drill some holes for the screws. I would wax the screws to put them in and the screws come with the kit. They're right here. And I would wax them to make sure that they go in nice and easy and we're going to drill those and install this plate just to make sure that everything fits in correctly. And once we get that fit in there, then we can do our test fit on the top to make sure this all goes together right. So assemble this as I just pointed out and drill some pilot holes in there and screw this assembly together. So I've drilled some 1 16th inch pilot holes where my marks are and it's as simple as dropping this assembly put together in the order that I showed you into your um, pepper mill and we're just going to use an awl here to align things properly. I'm going to press this down in here and like I said just take your time and align it. It's no big deal. We're not in a hurry. And once we get it aligned we're going to get that top bracket in place and I'm going to wax up those screws that it came with and we're going to screw this together. It's a little difficult here with one hand, etc. So just give me one second and uh, I'm going to get this started. And there I've got it started. And uh, with it started like that, it makes it much easier to just screw this together. And like I said, I put a little bit of wax on the screws just to help lubricate it as it goes in. And uh, just makes it a little easier to do. So once this is done, I'll show you what to do next. So if you did that correctly, you should have something that looks just like this. And I'll just get that to focus in for you. Just like that. And you can see that this pepper mechanism here is kind of loose in there. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's spring loaded and it adjusts from the top. Your next step that you want to do is you want to get this plate that we drilled out for earlier and you want to place it into your recess and same deal as what you just did with the, um, the other screws. I'm going to center punch these, drill a 1 16th inch pilot hole and I'm going to screw this into place. Well, the pilot holes are drilled, the drive plate is installed, and the next step is as simple as it could be. You just slide this head over top, making sure that the square hole that's in your drive plate um, goes squarely over top of 
your um, shaft. And then once the threads protrude at the top, you screw the provided knob on there. And there is your finished pepper mill. So it's as simple as that. Fill it up with peppercorns and uh, away you go. You tighten this knob up here to get a finer grind of pepper and loosen it a bit if you like a, a looser grind. But all in all, this is the, uh, this is the end of the, the pepper mill. Well, I've got a tiny bit of time left on the show, so um, I'm going to run through very quickly here, not to the extent of what I did with the pepper mill, but very quickly um, how to turn a, um, or what to do to make a salt shaker if you got the Lee Valley kit, which comes with this little plug and this little end here. Um, bottom line, uh, we're going to square off this blank on the table saw and uh, I'm going to mark my center. Once I get the center marked, uh, I'm going to drill a one and three quarter inch hole in the bottom about a half inch deep. Um, once that recess gets drilled, I'm going to drill a one inch hole down through this blank until I get to within one, maybe uh, maybe one, one and a half inches um, from the top. Um, I mean, even two inches, whatever you want. Then from the top, I'm going to drill down with a three quarter inch Forstner bit to meet up with the one inch hole. And once that all gets done, I'm going to mount it on centers on my lathe and we're going to turn this and, um, well, we'll see what we end up with. But for now, um, that's basically the process. So I'm not going to show you a video of this. I'm just going to uh, turn it quickly. And when I come back, we should have a full salt and pepper set. And there you have it. A pepper mill and a salt shaker. Um, I just want to reiterate the process that I took on the salt shaker. Uh, what I did here was mark the centers and I turned it round between uh, the Sorby Steb center and uh, a live uh, center at the tailstock, turned it round and turned a tenon and of course then mounted it back in the four jaw chuck. I drilled a one and three quarter inch hole, half of an inch deep, and then a one inch hole. I drilled that through till about an inch before the top. I then turned the top the way that I wanted it. And then when I was done, I drilled a three quarter hole right through the whole thing. Uh, then I parted it off the lathe, turned another jam chuck, just like we did with when, we, when we turned the top knob of the pepper mill. I turned another uh, jam chuck, spun it around, and with a live center was able to finish off the turning and apply the finish. And you can see here, uh, well, I'm quite happy with the results. It turned out very well. Um, this turns out that it's, uh, it's a gift, so I unfortunately don't get to keep this one, but um, somebody else hopefully will enjoy it for many years to come. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this two-part tutorial. I hope it has helped you and if it's cleared up any questions that, that you may have ever had on turning pepper mills. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Um, I'm sure my regular viewers know I always respond and uh, I'd love to hear from you. So guys, thanks for watching and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video. See you next week, guys.